Hi, this is Shadi and today I'm going to be discussing the history of the grading system found in both Judo and Jiu Jitsu. So if you are a practitioner of Judo or BJJ, you would know that passing from belt to belt is not an easy task and it represents a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication and a lot of hours spent on the mats. But let's talk about how the system came to be and discuss the general narratives and also the evidence found and see if these claims and narrative hold up to these evidence and also discuss the history of both Japan and Brazil when it comes to founding a grading system. So Jigoro Kano founded his school of Jiu Jitsu called the Kodokan back in 1882 and back then there was the Q and Dan system but there was no differentiation between the two so everyone just wore a white belt. So one great example is this uh, Jiu Jitsu demonstration you are watching circa 1912 by both Jiu Jitsu masters uh, Tobari and Taro Miyake who both went to the west spreading Jiu Jitsu and teaching and yet here they are wearing a white belt. So Kano needed a way to distinguish between the beginners and the advanced and so he came up with a black belt and a white belt so for example you still see the system today in Aikido you wear a white belt up until you are a black belt I had a similar experience however the Q grade even got more uh, distinguished and more separated for example the Q grade in Japan is not something just uh, special to martial arts however there are Q grades for something like logical board games for example and so they decided to separate the Q grade or the colored belts in today's terminology into six Q Rokyo, Gokyo, Yonkyo, Sankyo, Nikyo and Ikyo which means six up until to first grade so this was a way to, dis uh, to distinguish between the beginners and also the advanced and so Kano's system was based on uh, having these students interested in keeping training judo and he realized that creating this cue is a great way to put a clear system in front of them and also to track their progression and make them put targets in front of them in order to achieve them rather than just calling cue and done. Uh, fun fact the first done grade in the Kodokan or the first judoka to ever earn his black belt was none other than Tsunejiro Tomita, he was one of the four guardians of the Kodokan, the first disciple of Jigoro Kano, and he is the one that took with him to the West, young Mitsuyo Maeda, in order to create these presentations, make a living, and also took up the challenges of football players and American wrestlers. So, this particular system, Kano was introducing. Uh, the first dan and then second dan and third dan and then and thus the syllable was created from 6q to dan level so let's talk about the history of the colored belts so the general narrative goes as follows so uh, first when Mikunsuke Kaweshi a seventh dan Kodokan black belt traveled to Europe specifically in London and France he started teaching in Paris around 1935 and he realized that Westerners needed to see things for themselves and had different ideas of progress and thus the Q, I'm sorry, the colored system was uh, eventually created from white, yellow, orange, green, blue, purple, brown and then the black belt which symbolizes the dawn grade. So, Eventually, a lot of the people dropped the purple uh, grading. You can still see it in judo schools like in Brazil, for example, but uh, the reason why it was dropped by a lot of federations and associations in Europe is because uh, when you see a worn out belt, I'm sure you've had this experience before in jiu-jitsu particularly, you see someone wearing a worn out belt and you are confused whether it is purple or blue and thus it created a lot of confusion and so eventually they had to drop it so uh, the general narrative as I've mentioned it shows that it was Kaweshi who came up with the system in France 
around the 1930s and 40s after he started teaching there so however the evidence suggests otherwise for example in london and the budo kwai that was formed in 1918 uh, colored belts were started to being used to distinguish q levels as early as 1922 and there's also a club in seattle uh, Nisei Judo Club that's also started using colored belts in the late 1920s so far earlier than the 1930s like uh, Mikunsuke Kaweshi. Now let's go to BJJ how things started. So the BJJ ranking system it is a bit different but uh, there's no specific uh, strategy or a specific hierarchy or rank a lot of federations use different uh, ranking systems uh, but the general ranking goes as follows you have for the children the gray I'm sorry white gray yellow orange and then green and for the adults you have the white the blue purple brown and then black and for the black belts you have a bar on it that symbolizes whether you are a trainee or you are the professor. A professor would have usually a red or a blue uh, bar and the students who are black belts are have a white bar on their black belts. So you also have the stripes on the bar to signify your progression in this particular belt colored and down grade or black belt grade. So in BJJ this particular system was officially adopted uh, by high-level practitioners such as Hiyo Gracie, Carlos Gracie and Oswaldo Fada and been adopted by the Jiu-Jitsu Federation of Guanabara around the year of 1967 and like I said these high-level practitioners supported it so the black belt the Gracies introduced the black belt with the bars around the 1960s and like I said each federation differs for example you have federations that offer adults green belts before they offer them their blue belt uh, however there is an interesting story uh, Helio Gracie towards the end of his life he wore a blue belt even though he was the highest ranked belt or a red belt and a lot of people came up with speculations and differ different uh, theories such as Helio Gracie's favorite color was just blue and thus he wore the blue belt uh, as, as simply as a fashion statement and uh, simply because he mastered the art and he doesn't need a belt or something to show who he, who he was and so he wore his favorite color blue however his son Hoyce in a GNP TV interview he clarifies this whole thing and he says that uh, initially when he was training under the Japanese he only wore white and then a dark navy blue belt and because uh, a lot of these federations and clubs has strayed away from the Gracie Jiu Jitsu uh, teachings like self-defense because he uh, Hoy states that uh, Gracie Jiu Jitsu is a self-defense system not a sports or something like competition in order to gain medals so he clarifies that he saw people getting black belts being interested in sports etc so Hiyo Gracie he wanted none of that and went back to the initial uh, white and blue and he wore his blue belt and now Hoist Gracie himself wants to wear uh, a blue belt as well to honor his father and he stated that it was only his father that promoted him in the past but after his passing he doesn't want anyone else to promote him and thus returning to his navy blue belt so this is particularly the system it is very interesting there's a lot of claims there is a lot of general narratives but evidence suggests otherwise and also in BJJ they have their own story when it comes to the belt grading system because the expression of the belt is simply different from if the, you are a Kodokan Judoka you have the colored belts from white to black and also you have the white and red and then the red belt however in BJJ you have the bars with the stripes and then you have after the black belt you have a black and red belt and then the red belt so it has a different history and a different expression. I hope you enjoyed this little brief 
presentation about this history of the belts and the ranking in both judo and BJJ. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.